right? But this is a statement from Fine Gael in January last year when Fianna Fáil threatened to bring in this household charge, which they were going to bring in if they had managed to stay in power, but of course they're against it now, probably. But anyway, um, <laughs> Fianna Gael said 12 months ago, Fianna Gael recognises the need to raise more revenues from property if we are to minimise more economically damaging tax increases on jobs, enterprise and consumption. But the government's proposal to introduce a steadily rising annual recurring residential property tax on people's homes is unfair. Now, it says it will be difficult to pay for asset rich but income poor households, particularly the elderly and the unemployed. Fine Gael were actually concerned about the elderly and the unemployed last January, which is very interesting. <laughs> It also says it would be deeply unfair for a young generation that paid exorbitant amounts of stamp duty and VAT on the purchases of an overvalued houses, many of whom now find themselves in negative equity. Now, the party that said that 12 months ago, which says that what they're saying is that it's totally unfair to introduce this household charge, are now telling people that anyone who opposes it is being reckless and is going to break the law. Now, I, I don't think that they are being very genuine. And really, it's little surprising that politicians have such little credibility. I mean, why would you have any faith in them when they behave like that and one of the most striking things for me, since for the 10 months I've been in there, I actually can't believe that Fine Gael and Labour are behaving so similar to Fianna Fáil and the Greensley Forum. I'm actually frightened by it. And I mean, what it really tells me is that there's actually no difference between the lot of them. That they actually all think the same and they behave the same. I mean, and it was emphasised they introduced a salary cap for advisors of 92,000. But Andy Kenny wanted to give his fellow 135. And there's no money in the country. Now he eventually gave him 124. And Brendan Howland claimed that he tried to stop him. But then he went and gave his fellow over 100,000. <laughs> now I mean, honestly, if, if it wasn't so serious, it'd be funny, right? But it's actually. They're actually taking the money for me to do these things. There is no fairness. I am not telling you people what to do. But what I would suggest to you is that if you feel that you're not being fairly treated, that there is no fairness in this arrangement, that the measures that they've already been introducing, if you look at the last budget, there was 3.8 billion raised. Now, if they had to raise 3.8 billion in order to deal with the deficit in the, in the public finances, because apart from bailing out banks at all, this state has been spending more than it's taken in in revenue, and you've got to deal with that. So you've got to raise the money somehow in order to deal with it. And I was at a meeting with the Troika last week. I was representing the, tri the technical group with, with a few of the others, and I put the question to the Troika. I said, when I challenged the government, I said, about the unfairness of the, of the budget and the way that it impacted most on those who could least afford to pay it, I said, did you, did ye as a Troika, as a group, IMF, ECB, and European Commission, as a group, did ye instruct our government to collect the money in the manner that they have decided to collect it? Did you, did you tell them that you wanted to make these cuts and bring in these different measures? And they said, no. We said we wanted them to raise the 3.8 billion, but we weren't going to tell them how to do it. But I have found for the last couple of months, our government is hiding behind the Troika. They have used the Troika. Now, not that I'm going to stand up for the Troika up here. I mean, I'm not going to do that. But they have actually said, on a number of occasions, I have seen across the door, I've seen the minister hold up his hands and he says, but the Troika, 
We have no choice. We're bankrupt. We're in receivership. But that is untrue. They are making decisions on a daily basis. They decided to cut the fuel lamps for, for the elderly people. The Troika didn't tell them to do that. They decided to cut the disabled. The Troika didn't actually tell them to do that. The Troika didn't tell them to increase that from 21% to 23%, where it affects everybody who has to buy anything. It has no, These things do not factor in the notion of ability to pay. In a system where taxes fail, ability to pay is factored in because where there's fairness, you cannot take something from someone if they can't afford it. So when you handle, when you organize your taxation, you've got to do it in a fair manner and you have to take into consideration ability to pay. That has not happened in the last budget. And just for one example, I suggested before, during and after the budget, one way of raising, for example, the social welfare cuts came to around 750 million. So the cuts to different areas of the community, uh, uh, workers, uh, the disabled, uh, the, the fuel allowance, uh, there's a, a number of them, all hitting people in vulnerable positions. If the government had decided, okay, if they're going to have to take it to 3.8 3 billion, that's to do it somehow. But if they had, if they had looked at the, the issue of ability to pay, one way of, of picking up 700 million alone was to increase a new tax on monies earned over 100,000. Now, so in other words, if a fellow was making 150,000 in his wages, you're not hitting the money he's made up to 100,000 mark. That stays the same. You're, you're putting a different, a new tax. It would have taken a 55% tax ban on taxes earned between 100,000 up to his figure. That would have brought in, in Ireland, 700 million. And you would have been taking the money from people who could afford to give it to you. Likewise, it is frightening the amount of asset value held by less than 2% of the people in this country who control most of the wealth. It is not fair to think that you could not possibly collect money in this area. If this country is in such a poor state financially, if we have so many problems and we are in a dark place, surely the top 2% can carry their weight. Surely they could handle a wealth tax. And this notion also can all run out of the country. Well, in other countries, they're paying more tax than they pay here. I don't believe they'll all run out of the country. They could easily afford to do it, but our government took a different approach because they feel that the whole thing should be spread more and catch everybody in the net and they don't want to hurt the people with the most money. They want to try and spread it around and tax those and cut those who can't afford it. If there's one thing, my notion of government, government is supposed to be for the people. If it's for the people, why aren't they acting in the best interest of the people? Where are they coming from? I would have thought that, and I said to Enda Kenny only a couple of weeks in, I said, Will you, are you prepared to be judged? I said, if I said to you at the end of your term in office, did you do your best for those who most need your help? Will you be able to hold your head up and say, I did? And he says, I will. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Enda, but it isn't looking good. He cannot possibly say that, nor any of them. And, and you know something? It actually, what's even more frightening is that labor are part of this. I mean, we always kind of understood the notion that labor 
where a 